Hello everyone. At the time I'm making this video, we're still in social distancing mode, unfortunately, because of COVID-19. But today I'm out of the house at the grocery store getting food and other items my family needs, so you enjoy this clip of my shopping trip while I update you regarding how my efforts to get my channel off the ground are going. In this video, I'm going to discuss a topic that from what I've seen freaks a lot of YouTubers out, especially less experienced content creators like me. Of course, a lot of new YouTubers, it seems, get hung up on monetization. And I get it, people are anxious to get monetized on YouTube, and once they get monetized, they get anxious about staying monetized and finding more ways to get monetized. And I guess you can't blame people for wanting to get rewarded for their hard work building a channel. And I'm certainly one of those people who's looking forward to my first Google AdSense payday. But right now, YouTube partnership monetization, that's way off in the distance. It's just a dream for me. And at this point, I'll be happy just to get to 10 subscribers. But you know what does worry me? And this affects YouTubers no matter how big or small their channels are. It's those legal and rules violations that can prevent our videos from being watched by anyone at all. Because if no one can watch our videos, our YouTube channels can't grow. And one of the things that gets a video blocked from anyone seeing it is a copyright claim. I've read about and watched videos about how copyright claims work before I even started to build my channel. So in doing that research, I thought I had a decent idea of how to avoid them. But soon after uploading the 10th video from my channel, it happened. I got a copyright claim for the first time. In this video, I'll share with you what caused the copyright claim and the steps I took to get the copyright claim released, all in actually less than one day. So the video that got blocked by the content ID system is the most ambitious thing I've done on YouTube so far. This video is over 40 minutes long, and it includes a documentary timeline of the current COVID-19 pandemic, as well as more importantly, I would say a message to viewers to stay positive and healthy while planning for the future, even though this particular crisis, unfortunately, at least in the US where I live, it's still far from over. So making this video was important to me because I really wanted to get a positive message out to the world. And even though I knew it wouldn't get many views right away, since I'm still pretty much unknown on YouTube, I was still really excited to get it out there for the world to see over the long term. And then bam, YouTube notified me of the content ID copyright claim. And I literally freaked out. I, I, I seriously screamed into the palms of my hands. I was so upset. It really demotivated me and I didn't even really want to finish the work on the video. Because I was thinking, I don't want this thing in my life. I just wanted to go away. And I was just thinking of, frankly, deleting the video and moving on. Now, I realize that some of you who've been at this YouTube game longer than me, you're probably thinking, that's kind of funny that this guy got so upset over one copyright claim. And I get it. Honestly, a copyright claim is not the worst thing that can happen to a video or a channel. After all, this wasn't something worse like a copyright strike. If I'd gotten a copyright strike, then my video wouldn't have been just blocked. It would have been completely taken down from YouTube. And if you get three copyright strikes, then there's a good chance that you're out of the YouTube game altogether. Goodbye to your videos, your channel, possibly even your entire user account. Plus at that point, you're no longer allowed to create any new YouTube channels. So yeah, looking at the bigger picture, I was pretty much lucky to only get a copyright claim. But in my newbie YouTuber head, while it sucked that this particular video got blocked, what really upset me was the possibility that this could be a problem I'm gonna keep running into as I try to put up more and more videos. Because if that were to happen, I'm not sure how long I'd be motivated to keep doing something that as much as it's got potential and financial reward down the road, you know, in the meantime, it rewards my hard work by scolding me for doing something wrong time and time again. Well, anyway, after a few minutes, I finally got my heck together and I reminded myself that, hey, there's others out there. They've gone through this, many, many people, and they've gone on to become successful here on YouTube. So I set aside some time. I decided to read and watch you know, some of this information online on YouTube, Google regarding content ID and fair use again. And I decided to give the copyright claim dispute process a try. Now, <laughs> finally, this is all over and I can look back on it. And frankly, I'm really glad I did this. So here's what happened. I started the upload of the video with the visibility set to private. 
And while YouTube was processing the upload, as usual, I got to work on the video's thumbnail and description. But just a few minutes later, even before I could finish the description, a message and email from YouTube came in confirming that its content ID system had issued an automated copyright claim regarding one of the clips I'd used in the video. This particular clip was a portion of CNBC financial pundit Rick Santelli's March 5th, 2020 monologue, which is now you know, famous or infamous um, online about COVID-19's impact on the financial markets. Well, maybe we'd be just better off. We gave it to everybody. And then in a month, it would be over. We're re wreaking havoc on global and domestic economy. This footage is owned by NBC Universal. And that's a huge multi-billion dollar media company owned by an even huger multi-billion dollar media company. So YouTube informed me I had a handful of options regarding what to do with a copyright claim. First, I could do nothing and just accept the claim, but that would mean that the video would never see the light of day at all. I could also edit the copyrighted content out of the video, you know, trim it out, but that would screw up the continuity of both the visuals and the audio. And lastly, the third option, I could dispute the claim. So in other words, I could make a case to NBC Universal justifying why I feel the use of my clip does not violate their copyright and hope they see it my way. I kept going back and forth in my head regarding the pros and cons of each option. But in the end, the idea of cutting the copyrighted content out of the video, that just didn't feel right. Because that video really needs Santelli's emphatic rant to illustrate how strongly COVID-19 has impacted the markets and put people in the moral dilemma of even thinking about choosing financial well-being over physical health. But at the same time, I put too much work into making the video for it not to be seen at all. So I guess other than just by me. So that left me with just one option and that was the dispute process. So what can happen if you submit a copyright claim dispute? Well, of course, the best case scenario, and that's certainly the one I was looking for, is the content owner reviews your dispute and agrees your justification is fine and releases the claim. And everyone around the world can enjoy your video. I also learned that if a content owner doesn't respond to a dispute within 30 days, YouTube automatically releases the claim and the video gets unblocked. However, what if I lost the dispute? Meaning, what if NBC Universal decided to uphold the claim anyway? Turns out YouTube has an appeal process you can use if you run into a content owner who decides to uphold versus release a claim. Now, I didn't have any idea what the chances of success are if you file an appeal, but rolling the dice with a slim chance of success, I figured at least that's better than no chance at all. But there was frankly still another significant way that things could go uh, very wrong. <laughs> And that's because filing a dispute could also prompt the content owner to ask YouTube not to just block the video, but take it down altogether. A takedown request would also add a copyright strike to my YouTube account, and as I touched on earlier, that could be the beginning of far worse things if other copyright strikes were to follow. So yeah, there was definitely a chance that by exercising my right to dispute, this whole thing could totally blow up in my face. But since there were two, even possibly three ways the situation could go in my favor, I felt you know, the odds were good enough for me to go for it. So I filled out the online dispute form, hit submit, then I received an email confirmation from YouTube that they'd received my dispute submission. So I sat back, took a deep breath, got myself calm, and just started the waiting game. Surprisingly though, I didn't have to wait long for something to happen. I checked the status of my video in YouTube studio a few hours later, and I noticed that the video was no longer fully blocked. It was now just partially blocked, meaning it could be watched in some parts of the world, but not others. And I'm not really sure how that criteria works or if the change was even triggered by the dispute, which I'd submitted. But hey, at least someone, even if it was maybe say a lone scientist, social distancing in Antarctica, someone could enjoy what I made. I figured limited visibility was better than nothing. So if that turned out to be the final outcome, I felt okay with it and I was just at that point frankly ready to move on and make another video. But then the next day I was reading through my email and I realized, hey, I have a new message from YouTube. And what that message said, man, it blew me away. I was almost in as much shock when I read that message as when I first got notified of the content ID claim. Because in less than a day, this whole thing was over. As you see in this screenshot, NBC Universal had reviewed my dispute submission, then released the claim, and now my video was in full visible mode worldwide. 
So did I do anything special that caused the dispute to go away so favorably and so quickly? Uh, honestly, at this point, I'm not experienced enough as a YouTuber to tell you why the claim release happened so fast. Maybe this is the norm and a lot of content owners who participate in the content ID program, they just prefer to release claims when they receive disputes instead of going through all the hassle of analyzing the disputing YouTubers justification. There is a chance though that content owners who go overboard and abuse use of copyright claims can get in trouble with YouTube as well. So for example, they can get kicked out of the content ID program if they're using it you know, just, I guess, too overzealously and without merit. Now, if you're out there and you're an experienced YouTuber and you have insights or theories on this, please comment and share your thoughts. I'd, I'd love to hear those. But here's what I can tell you about my situation. And this gave me confidence going into the dispute process. Because I felt strongly that my video met the legal standards for fair use of copyrighted content, which is one of the exceptions YouTube allows for when a content creator uses video and, or audio owned by someone else. So how did I learn about fair use? This goes back to my early years in the rat race, actually. This is when I was a high school student, and also when I was in college, I, I worked as a part-time journalist for my local newspaper. And of course, in that line of work, you have to learn about intellectual property and the basics of laws and industry standards related to copyright, including how fair use works. And since YouTube's copyright protection practices are largely based on US laws and legal precedents, after reviewing YouTube's educational materials to dust off my understanding of fair use, I got started making videos for this channel feeling pretty comfortable that my content was in compliance with fair use. And it's kind of funny because for as big a fuss as this topic creates, the fair use statute in US is really quite short in length. Here, take a look. See most of it, which is the language we tend to focus on as video content creators, it all fits on one title card. However, the key is interpreting the statute now that's where all the complexity kicks in and you know, I'm glad there are people who've taken the time to deep dive into this topic and share their knowledge and insights with the rest of us. So let's take a look at the justification that I submitted along with my dispute. Now, as you read this, if it looks like something that's just an everyday you know, professional business memo or an email, well, honestly, that's all it really is. Like I said, it's nothing fancy. Yeah, this is the type of thing I write all the time at work on my day job, and you probably use stuff like this as well. For me, it's you know, really dissimilar to how I would communicate with a key decision maker, a lawyer, uh, say a business partner in my line of work. After all, even though I was just a dude sitting at my computer when I typed this in my boxer shorts and a t-shirt, well, yeah, I'm also a YouTuber, and yeah, I have an intention to monetize my channel, and that makes me a business owner, initiating a business-to-business -business communication with another business owner. So yeah, going on a rant with the mindset of a customer who got screwed over during something like a Black Friday sale, and then going off on the content owner, and, and if, say, you're filing a dispute, going off on Google and treating them as adversaries, that just didn't seem like a very good idea. Of course, a nicely written dispute communication, that's not going to probably make up for a weak or non-existent dispute justification. But because I took the time to make my video with fair use in mind, all I had to do was just type out the facts that justify fair use that I had in mind when I made the video. And that includes information such as timestamps to make it as easy as possible for the content creator to access and review the evidence. And, you know, that way there's no need to plead with the content owner or otherwise try to convince the content owner to release the claim in what will ultimately, unfortunately, probably be a losing cause. And then I finished off my justification with a polite closing and call to action. Again, standard, you know, business communication. And as I said, I was just emphasizing treating the content owner as a business partner versus as an enemy. Well, and I guess it worked. But just because my first experience dealing with a copyright claim went this well, you know, I'm not really not kidding myself because you know, this could have just been beginner's luck and the representative of NBC Universal on the other side maybe just happened to be in a good mood that day. And could this happen again? <laughs> oh, absolutely. And honestly, I'm pretty sure if the YouTube content ID system remains as it is, it's going to happen to me again. And going forward, that's because there will certainly be situations, especially because content ID is automated, where even if you've gone to great lengths to meet fair use requirements, you're still going to end up with a claim. Hey, for all I know, because the CNBC clip we've been talking about, which was of course in my last video that got the claim, it's also included in this video, 
and YouTube has confirmed that the clip is in the content ID system, you know, there's a chance this video also will get an automated copyright claim for the exact same reason as my last video. Now, if that happens, my justification will be that I've used even less of the clip this time around than I did the first time. And I'm going to great lengths now, and as I did earlier in this video, to directly comment on the clip and make sure I'm compliant with fair use. I've also orally cited NBC Universal as the owner of the clip multiple times, and as a courtesy, I've included an attribution in the video description below regarding the source I used for their copyrighted content. If I do get another copyright claim, I'll let you know, <laughs> and I'll tell you how it goes. But in the meantime, I'm glad to give credit and express appreciation to NBC Universal for considering my dispute and doing the right thing on my behalf. So there you go. That's the story of my first content ID copyright claim and how I was able to get it successfully released in less than 24 hours. If you've got experience surviving content ID or other copyright claims, you know, even those worst copyright strikes on YouTube, please tell me about them in the comments so we can learn and benefit from each other's experiences. Okay, it's time to check out and head out for now. Thanks for following along with me on my journey to make it as a YouTuber and get out of the rat race. I put up some additional videos here in the Zen card regarding that journey. Please subscribe, like, and of course ring notification bell so you know when additional videos come out. In the meantime, please be safe, you and your family, and I look forward to checking back in with you again soon here on The Polarizer.